Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Good morning, Calvary. Pastor Chad here again, talking about Gideon for your word for the day. Hey, yesterday we talked about how Gideon said yes to God's call, even though he felt like he was insignificant, unimportant, and God said, you're the mighty warrior I'm going to use to deliver my people. And today I want to talk about the, um, uh, the fear that accompanied Gideon's call. So he had a, an encounter with an angel that, that struck a rock and consumed the food that Gideon had prepared as, as an offering. And so he knew this was God. And then God spoke to him and said, don't be afraid. And he built an altar to God. Uh, but Gideon's uncertainty about what God really wanted him to do went way beyond that. Now, I've never had an encounter with an angel that I know of. And uh, God's spoken to me primarily through the word of God and through prayer. But, um, but he had this direct encounter with God. So you'd think he would be full of confidence and certain of his calling, but he wasn't. So if today, if you're a little unsure of what God wants you to do, that's okay. You're in good company, along with one of the heroes of the faith. So uh, here's the story of Gideon. So once he knows now that God's called him to do this, he builds an altar. God tells him, I want you to tear down the altar to Baal in your village, and I want you to uh, build me an altar and sacrifice uh, a bull on it. And so Gideon, full of confidence, decides he's going to obey God. But he's terrified of the men of the town. They're all his relatives, but he's terrified of them. Uh, again, I mentioned he might have been a coward uh, yesterday. And so he does it in the middle of the night. So he takes some of his servants and he goes out there in the middle of the night. And he tears down the altar to Bell, chops it up, builds an altar to God, sacrifices a, a, a bull on it. And in the morning, the men come out and they see the altar of Baal has been torn down and they are livid. They want to kill him. And Gideon's dad, Gideon doesn't even speak for himself, Gideon's dad gets up and goes, hey, if Baal's got a problem with it, let Baal defend himself. And so they began calling uh, Gideon Jerubabel. So let Baal contend for himself. And uh, we're still going to call him Gideon because that's just too hard to say. But um, so now, you know, he should be, again, full of confidence. You know, he's, God confirmed it, the angel consuming fire, food with fire. Uh, you know, now this whole miracle where the people didn't get, uh, well, they got mad, but they didn't kill him. And, but, but Gideon is still afraid. And so, uh, and you may have heard reference to this, but then Gideon puts out a fleece. And he prays, and he says, God, let the fleece be wet and the ground dry if this is really what you want me to do. And he wakes up in the morning, and the fleece is wet and the ground is dry. And he says, God, don't be mad at me, but I want you to do it again, only this time make the ground wet and the fleece dry. And it's exactly like that. And so now Gideon has three times been told by God what he wants him to do. Three times. God has confirmed it. And so then Gideon uh, begins to take action. And we're going to talk about that tomorrow. Gideon begins to call the people out for war. Now, once he's called them all out and God's told him the plan and everything like that, he still, he still is doubting God's word and direction. But God gives him one more sign. He goes down, sneaks down to the camp, and here's uh, one guy who had a dream uh, telling his dream. And the other guy is saying, oh, that's Gideon, and he's going to destroy us. So God confirmed four different times Gideon's uh, hesitation to follow through. So uh, first of all, if you're kind of doubting what God wants you to do, you're in good company. It's okay. Go ahead and ask for, you know, God to, to verify this is what he wants you to do. Ask for confirmation. But secondly, just know this. Because we have the word of God, when we read it, and when we read God telling us to do something, like love our neighbor as ourselves, love our enemy and pray for those who persecute us, forgive everyone just as we've been forgiven by Jesus, if you want to be great, be a servant of all. If we hear those statements, those directives from God, we don't have to wonder about them being confirmed because God wrote them down in black and white for you and me to read them and to obey them. And if you want God to confirm anything else in your life, start by doing the things that he's already directed. And I promise you, he will direct your steps as you submit to his will. When we submit to his known will, he will confirm those parts that aren't revealed in Scripture very clearly to our lives. So uh, I want you to be like Gideon. Go ahead and ask the questions. Ask for the confirmation. But I also want you to be like Gideon. And when God confirms it, when God communicates it clearly, that you'll do it. No matter how crazy it might seem. 
And that's for tomorrow. So I hope this uh, blesses you. I hope this helps you. And I hope this gives you confidence to follow Jesus. God bless.